Today we're going to be talking once again about the upcoming hurricane season. Right now you're taking a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the globe. Obviously our blue areas are going to be our below normal sea surface temperature regions. The yellows and reds are going to be our above normal sea surface temperature regions. It's important to note that tropical activity usually thrives in warmer conditions, obviously, water conditions. Now, the colder water conditions aren't going to be as good for tropical development. That's not to say that Tropical development is always going to happen in warmer waters and it's never going to happen in a little bit of cooler waters. There is some uh, obviously bend, bending to the rules that does take place, but overall that is important to note. Now, one thing for sure is that we do have a La Nina. You see that giant blue dagger looking thing coming off of the Pacific coast of South America and stretching almost uh, to uh, basically Asia uh, and it's well, well, well west of even Hawaii there to the southwest of Hawaii, uh, that is going to be our La Nina region, and that is still very strong and very, very healthy. So that's also important to note. Now, here is the seven-day change, and this shows us what has changed over the past seven days. Obviously, again, yellow and orange regions have warmed over the past seven days, and blue regions have cooled over the past seven days. Uh, and the Pacific is really hard to read here. We do have uh, kind of some warming, kind of some cooling there in our La Nina, El Nino region there. Uh, but there's not much to go based off of here. So we're just going to really skim past this. Here is a zoomed in look at the Atlantic though. This isn't the seven day change. This is actually the sea surface temperature anomalies overall. So a couple things to note here. Uh, the Atlantic is warmer overall or the North Atlantic better yet. It is warmer overall. Um, when you take a look at the entire ocean as a whole, it is, war it is, it is warmer than normal period. Uh, now, we do have some warmer than normal conditions, specifically there in the Gulf is what I'm noticing. The Caribbean as well, especially the northern Caribbean, so north of Cuba, north of Haiti, north of the Dominican Republic, we see warmer than normal conditions there. If you head south of Jamaica, south of Haiti, south of Dominican Republic, and south of, uh, south of Puerto Rico there, we see a little bit of some cooler waters or at least neutral. These can change a lot, by the way, over the next couple of months as we approach hurricane season. Uh, but each month that I do this, it's going to become a little bit more clear what we're heading towards. Uh, so warmer in the Gulf could lead towards more development. We see warmer for the southeast coast in the Bahamas, like I said. That is going to also be uh, something that could lead towards more development there for tropical activity as well. So we're going to keep that in mind. Now the area in between the Caribbean and Africa there, we call that our MDR for short or for long main development region. This is the main area where tropical storms start and they usually head towards the United States and towards the Caribbean from that point. Uh, and we could tell that this area is a little bit cooler than what is typical, okay? And usually that means that there's going to be a little bit less activity happening in this region, which is really crucial because that's the start of these storms. This is the foundation of these storms. Um, so this is really a big time indicator if it is to stay this way over the next couple of months. The seven day change here reveals that we've seen some warming here in the Gulf of Mexico and also in the Northern Caribbean there. Uh, but we've also seen some cooling there in the Southern Caribbean, also offshore of the East Coast, and then also in that main development region offshore of Africa as well. Uh, so these are all very crucial things that we're gonna be paying attention to uh, over the coming months. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe by the way, because we will be breaking this down over the coming months. And I think last year I even did this series through the hurricane season. So like, let's say August, we're obviously like halfway through the hurricane season at that point. Uh, I, I was still making these updates so that we could see the current status. So this is gonna be something I'm gonna be doing for months to come here. Now we're switching gears here. We're switching towards some charts. This is our Nino 3.4 index. This shows us what the status of that La Nina is basically. And right now we can see that it's at about negative 0.5 to negative one there on the chart. Uh, and it's been pretty steadily in that range for the entire uh, three month period I think this is on this chart. And what's interesting to note is we're at basically the lowest point we've been at. This is descending from left to right. We can tell that this blue line is slightly descending. So since February, we've actually seen a strengthening of that La Nina, which is a little bit unexpected to say the least. Uh, now here is the forecast. So that was looking at the past. Obviously, this is looking forward. What's expected to happen? And the green line uh, there is going to be our average. So we see the kind of solid green line there. It kind of goes through the middle. That is the average of all of these different models. And we can see that we really aren't expected to go 
warmer or cooler with this. This stays, you know, cool straight through the, the very bottom right. You can see that DJF. That's December, January, February. So that takes us all the way to the winter time. Uh, we're staying basically around that negative 0.5 line, which is right around where you're at a weak La Nina status or a neutral Enso that is more towards La Nina. Regardless, we're staying around that La Nina status. And why does that have any implications, you might be asking? Like, why does this matter? Okay, because you've probably heard about it for wintertime, uh, but you probably don't know the exact impacts that this has. This has massive implications for the hurricane season because in a La Nina phase, we see more favorable wind conditions, upper wind conditions for these storms in the Atlantic. Okay, so in a La Nina, we see these weaker winds head through the North Atlantic, and this allows for these storms to just freely develop without having to worry about strong winds that are heading in a opposite direction, we call the shear, that would really just cut the top off of these storms and weaken them. When there's no strong winds in the upper atmosphere that are messing around with these storms, basically, uh, this is when we see very strong development of hurricanes. And in a La Nina, that's what that causes to happen. Let's take take a minute to talk about what would happen in the opposite phase, like an El Nino. We only see one model that takes us to an El Nino is that blue one that goes crazy high up compared to the other models. Who knows? It could be right. But uh, if we were to be in an El Nino, what would happen is we would see stronger winds head over the North Atlantic uh, from the West. So from the West to the East in the North Atlantic, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, basically. We would see stronger winds and this would basically hold back some of the activity in the hurricane season because these strong winds would cause these hurricanes and tropical storms to get broken up by those stronger winds. So we're seeing the opposite of that now. We're, we're going to see much more favorable winds most likely from this La Nina uh, and that's why it matters. Let's move on a frame here and this is a little bit of a different chart also pertaining to our ENSO forecast which is um, your El Nino Southern Oscillation. That's what ENSO is short for. Uh, Basically, this is based on percentages. We still have the months at the bottom. So SON, for instance, down there uh, is going to be September, October, November. ASO is August, September, October. That's mainly going to be the one we're taking a look at here, right dead center, right above the word season there. That's our middle point. That's the heart of the hurricane season. And as you can see, the blue line is the tallest there, uh, that blue uh, little bar. And that's the La Nina forecast probability. So that, that's indicating that we have about a 50% chance of having a La Nina. And then we have about that gray, the gray one is the second tallest, and we have about a, I would say, 41% chance of that one occurring. Uh, and then whatever's left of the percentage is what an El Nino probability is, uh, and that's that little red one to the right of the gray one. So we can see that we're either likely going to be in a La Nina or a neutral Enso, and it's very, very unlikely that we're going to see a El Nino uh, so La Nina seems to be the most likely outcome for this hurricane season, and then a neutral Enso would be the second most likely, which would likely still be on the colder side, which would mean it would be more like a La Nina than an El Nino most likely, which would also be favorable for the hurricane season. So things are looking very favorable for tropical activity basically in the Atlantic uh, as far as our Enso is concerned. Now let's take a look at some other charts. These are just going to pertain to how the current conditions of the Atlantic mostly. So this one here is for the North Atlantic. Um, we can see that we dipped colder there. The, the solid line there in the middle that cuts from left to right there on a horizontal basis there, uh, that is our 0, 0.0 line. So that means it's completely average, the Atlantic. Uh, so we see that things were above average to start with. And then in, towards the middle, they went below average. And now we've popped back to far above average right now. This shows how quickly things can change. So we're going to talk about this a tiny bit. But... They can change very quickly and we could just as easily as we've gone to above average, we can go back to below average. So keep that in mind as well. But as far as things are trending in a positive direction, as, you know, as long as things are warming up in the Atlantic, uh, that leads us to feel that it would be more likely to have an above average Atlantic during the hurricane season than a below average Atlantic, if that makes sense, because that's already where the trend is headed right now. Now we can also see here the Atlantic MDR, which again is that main development region in between the Caribbean and Africa. This one has actually been on a downtrend. It was pretty consistently going down from about February 11th all the way until about the middle portion of April, late portion of April maybe. And then it really turned up all the way to about 0.0, .0 so average. Uh, and now it's descended a little bit since then, but things have generally warmed up. Uh, and we're sticking right around that neutral line. So this one can go really in any, any direction, but the trend has been colder. So we'll see what happens with that one. 
Here's the Caribbean. We can see that this one was much warmer and now it's about neutral. This includes the Southern Caribbean and the Northern Caribbean. So that's why this is popping up as about neutral. Uh, but our Gulf of Mexico here, you can see was pretty negative there or at least neutral. And that's really climbed to where it's about a degree above normal Celsius, which is pretty significant for a, a large area like that. So uh, things are looking significantly above normal there at least. Uh, and overall the Atlantic has warmed quite a bit, including the North Atlantic especially. Um, but the main development region in the Caribbean is a bit cooler. So we have a lot to unfold here over the coming months, but that is the general trend at this point. So hopefully that was pretty educational and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. For today's confidence tab, since we're pretty far away from the hurricane season, we're going to be talking about a three out of six for today's video. And it's a long range forecast anyway for many, many months ahead. Uh, so our confidence is low for those reasons. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Eagle, Lila Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kotalasa, Capite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Clasey also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.